Hey everybody, welcome back to Do Me A Solid. Um, in today's episode, I'm going to be going over how to loft in SolidWorks. Okay, so lofting basics. Uh, I'm going to have several examples of different ways to loft in SolidWorks, and I will show you the different ways that you can use guide curves and profiles and points to be able to do that. But there's a couple of rules that we should probably start off with to make sure that everybody understands how to properly do it. Okay, so first off, what you need to make sure that you have is at least two profiles. Now, when I say profiles, I basically just mean sketches. So it can be either a sketch or a point, but it has to be on two different planes. So as you can see in this sketch here and this uh, profile, that I have one on the top plane right here, and then I have another one on a new plane that I brought up 1.85 inches, and then I made it to a point on this one. So at minimum, you need two, prof two profiles or one profile and one point to do that. To make more complex lofts, you need to have guide curves. And the guide curves, I need to stress this, must be attached to both sketches. Okay, One way to do that, and I'm going to go into this sketch to demonstrate, is by piercing. So if you draw the polyline, the spline here, outside of whatever you want to attach it to, and then you click on the point, click on one of the two profiles that we were referring to and hit the pierce command, that will automatically attach it. All of these sketches need to be attached in order for the uh, loft to work properly. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that example before we get to it. So in order to do a simple loft with a point, um, you go ahead and hit the loft base command here, and then you pick the lower profile. And then you'll notice that it might be difficult. It depends on how it's arranged, but it could be difficult to hit the point sketch. So if there's a complex amount of things coming into it, like you have several guide curves, then you're going to have to either select the point here and see if it sticks. And if not, just go up to your feature tree and select that sketch from the feature tree, and that will work as well. So a loft from a, uh, from a square base profile to a point basically yields a pyramid and then if you move that point anywhere it'll just tilt the pyramid to whatever direction it goes to now what you can also do is if we use a guide curve we can go back into that loft edit the feature and then what you can do is you can edit the guide curve that we added and as you can see what it does if you have one guide curve is that it's going to pull everything moving to the side and it's influenced directly by the shape of that guide curve on both sides. So you effectively have a wave or a shark tooth or the back of a dragon, uh, any kind of cone-shaped object that needs to come to a point. Um, generally frowned upon in injection molding, unless there's a purpose for it. But for the sake of this video, we have that to show. So, okay. So that is lofting from a profile to a point. The next one that we're going to go over here is lofting from profile to profile. Now, what this is going to do is it's essentially going to take the sketch from the square down here to this complex profile up here. And I do want to go over this in a little bit of detail because some people don't understand how this works. So if I click on this and then I click it up to the profile, you can see this green piece, this green dot arrives on the profile that it's leaning up to and on the profile it's coming from. Um, depending on the complexity of the shape that you're lofting to and from, you may have to move this. And when you move it, it actually affects the way that the loft is performed. Uh, what I would recommend when it comes to these kind of profiles is that if you're going from a complex one like this one, you can see the amount of points that are surrounding it. But if you go from a profile that has complex points to this, from a simple one like this, you can break up this bottom sketch to make sure that it has just as many points. And I'll go over that right now. So if you right click on this sketch and click edit sketch, what you can do is if you know how you want this loft to move, you can right click, hit sketch tools, 
and then go ahead and hit split entities. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to take these continuous lines or continuous splines if you have a complex profile and click on an area where you want them to split. The more you split, the more areas this simple shape has to connect with the other profile that we were just looking at. So if you go back to the loft now and then select one of the segments that we created from that split command, now you can see that if you need to, you can connect it from this point to this point, this point to this point, and all of these points now have a relative point on that square to connect to. So if you have a complex profile like this and you want it to equal up to the same amount of points, go ahead and take that complex profile and make sure that it has the same amount of points that you have in the original image that you have right here or on the sketch. And that way it'll be a smooth transition. And you can see from this that this can be pretty complex. It can be turned into a vase, for example. It'd be a pretty gnarly vase, actually. But you could make a vase out of this. You could probably turn this into some kind of metal a uh, sheet formed piece uh, and then weld it up after you create the seams but this complex part in the center may may lead to some difficulty but that's an example of a profile to a profile without a guide curve so go ahead and hit delete on that one okay next one multi-profile loft so I am demonstrating this for the sheer purpose that most of the lofts that you are going to encounter or need to do are going to be more than two profiles. Um, I've had lofts that have gone all the way up from 10 to 15 just because of the complexity of the way that the loft actually had to be constructed. Um, in the case of a body of some sort, like a flashlight housing, um, depending on how complex you make that, you would have to have several different multiple profiles to ensure that the translation from front to back is correct. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and loft this. We'll start at that rectangle at the bottom, pull up to the first one, pull up to the second one. And again, you can see in the sketches that I've made here that this this sketch here has the same amount of points as this one because all I did was I clicked on this sketch, control C, clicked on plane 2, and then pasted it right there in place. So it is literally the same profile. But this is a good example of showing how things can change between the two different profiles once they go into a third. And like I said, this can go on and on. You could do this to 15 profiles and whatever height you need. And then uh, it can go from this point, like uh, from this view, this type of ISO view, or in the case that I'm using, Control-7 will get me to the ISO view from the top plane. So these are different ways that you can mess with the profiles, but this is a multi-profile loft. Okay, and then the next one is going to be a multi-plane loft with guide curves. So as you can see here, I did the same thing I did on the last sketch where I took the sketch that I wanted, hit control C, clicked on the plane, hit control V to paste, and you can see that it gave me that same profile. And then once I got into this, I went ahead and double clicked on it to edit the sketch. And all I did was go up to move entities, scale, and then I chose this. And then it asks you where you want to scale about, and I wanted to make it two times the size of the original. So I scaled it about the centroid because that's where I left this one, and that's how I got this top profile. So I hope that helps you understand how I achieved that sketch. Now that we've said that, so this way we're going to take care of the uh, loft the same way that we did the last one. You go to the loft, you click on one of the segments of the base, click on one of the segments here, Click on one of the segments here. Now, as you can see, SolidWorks put in its own curvature maps along this surface. So it basically generated its own guide curves based on what it had. And in this case, it's actually got several because you can see that the yellow lines correspond to the different points I was referring to or come close to them. But if you want to constrain it a little more specifically, you can see that I have some guide curves in here. And then if I click one, it'll pull it and attach it to that one. And then if I click on this one, it'll pull it and attach it to this one. Now, something to note is that every profile in the sketch and every guide curve needs to be its own sketch. 
if you were to take both of these guide curves, draw them in one sketch, and then try to apply them, it won't know what to do. So the best practice for that is to either make one sketch that has both profiles and then make this one into a center line and then create another sketch and just convert entities on this and that way it'll always stay the same if you have something symmetrical or it's to draw two separate sketches if you know that both sides are not going to be symmetrical or they're going to have to be shaped in a funny or different way. Okay, so this is the example of a multi-profile loft with guide curves. And this one also is as the previous ones, you can hit shell and go ahead and add a thickness of, I'm going to put 60 thousandths just for the sake of it being thin and then shell it out and you have a pretty fancy looking uh, vase here so you can see inside of it. Now you have to make sure that if it's something that you are going to have to shell out or divide that you do make the profiles such that when you loft the thickness doesn't go crazily thin in any sector or else the uh, shell will fail. So that's just something to keep in mind there. But uh, this is basically, these are my four examples of lofting. If you learned anything from this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future video, please leave them in the comments section below. Cheers.